It's the Siemens Innovation Day and I'm in conversation today with uh, Peter Cote, who is the Chief Technology as well as Chief Strategic Officer at Siemens AG, as well as Mr. Sunil Mathur, the CEO and MD at Siemens. So good to have you both here and so interactive in this exhibit zone. Mr. Mathur, Siemens has now entered the coveted 1 lakh crore market cap for the company. I just want to understand because we've seen all of your businesses grow across the board. Do you believe that this kind of growth is here to stay and likely to continue? The first major challenge is really understanding how much digitalization can actually do to, to get productivity out and give us real benefits, not only productivity, but also create new opportunities. Um, and I think that is really something that we can start with. 60 million small and medium enterprises in the country, a huge opportunity for digitalization for them. The Make in India concept, that the government is talking about. Huge opportunity to be competitive, globally competitive, uh, resulting from digitalization. Mr. Corte, you know, the what a fantastic program this is. We're seeing, the, you know, accelerator program, real uh, focus and thrust on digitalization. So I just want to understand how this really interweaves into Siemens' ambitions for growing digitalization. Yeah, sure. Um, so the whole discussion is about bringing both worlds together. The real world, as you have there with a charger, and then the digital world, as you have here with some, some simulation. And so Accelerator enables essentially the seamless data flow between devices and software, and between software and software, so make it insanely easy for customers. So Neil mentioned that there is 16 million mm -hmm. of small to medium-sized enterprises many of them don't know where to start. So yeah. they need to have something really easy that they can readily deploy and use and test. And this is what Accelerator does. It provides very easy as a service solutions that are flexible, that are open and that work in their environment. I didn't think we would be saying words like metaverse when it came to you know, the business world, but the industrial metaverse. Tell us a little bit more about the advantages, how Siemens is really looking to integrate that and what the benefits are. Great question. And you know what? It is, as with every technology, it is an evolving thing. It's not there yet, right? So everybody knows that there will be sometimes some life in a parallel digital world. We at Siemens, we say, this is going to happen in the industrial world as well. Yeah, yeah. And you already see it today. It's already here because you've got digital twins. So digital twins essentially are um, digital representations of something that we've built around. For example, this, this exhibition, we can bring in the digital world. The nice thing about this is now we can simulate. We can simulate how many people are in here, how's the heat, how's the illumination. We can also now make it photorealistic that it really, really, really looks like in a movie actually. And we can use it for collaboration, that you and I, we can look at this exhibit screen and can say, ah, doesn't it look this nice? And you would say, nah, I would like to change the colors. And we can change this all together virtually, interactively, in real time. Wow, so just with, I, I guess, the click of a button and it can all happen virtually and in real time, exactly. as you say. Exactly. Mr. Mathur, hopefully you should be able to answer this. I'm sure you're a very happy man given the fact that Siemens has now entered the coveted 1 lakh crore market cap for the company. I just want to understand because we've seen all of your businesses grow across the board. Do you believe that this kind of growth is here to stay and likely to continue? Oh, absolutely. I think digitalization, uh, the journey has actually just begun, right? And for a country like India, where uh, digitalization has started but not accelerated, that is really the opportunity for a company like Siemens. So I do believe, be it in manufacturing, be it in logistics, be it in infrastructure, energy transition, be it in buildings, commercial complexes, everywhere digitalization will play a key role. And everywhere Siemens is very much entrenched in that uh, ecosystem. Okay, and uh, Mr. Mathur, you know, previously we had, when we had interacted, we spoke of some of the challenges in terms of the semiconductor chip shortage, as well as the overall uh, demand environment, logistical challenges, but it seems now that a lot of that is behind us? I wouldn't say that it's behind us. Um, let's look at it in two parts. Let's look at the demand side. The demand side is huge. The government spending, capital expenditure uh, on infrastructure has actually triggered the downstream private sector companies to produce more. So that has really led to an increase in demand, right? So the demand side is doing well. Railways, 
uh, highways, ports, airway, uh, airports, uh, but also new factories, semiconductor factories, e-vehicle factories, uh, etc. The transition to, in energy also creating a huge opportunity over there. So the demand side is doing well. The challenge is, however, on the supply side. Um, I don't believe semiconductors issues are going to get resolved in the in the near future. It's going to take some time, yeah. right? And uh, this is where resilient organizations are going to have to learn how to deal with that. Another area where digitalization plays a, uh, plays a huge um, role. Um, we don't know where commodities will go. We don't know where inflation will go. We don't know where corresponding interest rates will go, right? So that is more of a concern to me rather than the demand. Um, we are seeing, I think, um, for the first time, really a terrific uptick in the demand in the country. Okay, I don't know which of you would be better equipped to answer this question, but I'm just going to sort of take off because at a time like this, there are we're also presented with a few global challenges. Is that going to slow down the overall private capex for the country, for Siemens as well? Are there any global headwinds that you'd be worried about? No, I would say to, uh, to the contrary, because what we need in this world is, is, of course, reliable growth and constant growth. And if you look at GDP for this year in India, 7% is a huge number. Uh, and uh, with inflation being moderate in that sense, yeah. I think it's a wonderful market opportunity for us as Siemens on a global capital allocation to think about, okay, now how can we grow even more into the future? Sunil? So, mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. I'd agree with that. So, I mean, uh, when you look at the, the biggest issues that are confronting the world today, inflation is a big one and therefore the corresponding interest rates, right? But would that impact margins down the line for No, the so for, uh, uh, let's look at it, I'm talking from an India perspective, yes. So from an India perspective, we've always been used to 7-8% inflation rates, right? Um, we've always been used to uh, interest rates which have been reasonably high as well. So all that is baked in to, into project plans, etc. I do not see margins coming under stress right now. We'll have to see, and as I said the last time we met, I am talking as of today. As interest rates go off, may go up in the future, we will have to see how, what kind of an impact that has. But as we see it today, they're all baked into the, into the project plans here. And maybe I can add to this. Is sure. Siemens has always been strong in particular in challenging times. Why am I saying this? If you look at the balance sheet at Siemens, we are very well capitalized. So in terms of higher interest rates don't concern us too much because relatively speaking, we are less leveraged. The second one is with most of the, our offerings, we are market leaders. And what do market leaders? They have pricing power. So in other words, much of all the raw material increases and so on, we actually can also moderately pass on to our customers right. and share the burden. Okay. Um, Mr. Mathur, when we look at your individual uh, segments with smart infrastructure, mobility, etc., where do you think the leadership in terms of growth is going to come as we integrate digitalization a lot more? So look, manufacturing is here to stay, right? The, you know, we spoke about it the last time, the share of manufacturing going up from 15% to 25%. Um, digitalization will play a key role there, but you can't have smart manufacturing without smart infrastructure, right? right? and you will need smart infrastructure and this is where the move of the government to, to go into areas like reducing uh, logistic costs, right, um, is a huge opportunity. Companies like ours can manage intra-logistics. Uh, companies like ours know what solutions to bring out there. We are present in mobility, in the railways, in cargoes, uh, vehicles there. We are pl present in, um, on, on highways. We are present so we are present in every part of the infrastructure and I think the uptick in manufacturing that will come, that has already started coming, with the, with the clear push of the government towards getting smart infrastructure right, will create smart cities, will create smart urban places, will create smart uh, environments yes. to enable manufacturing to happen. And finally, Mr. Mathur, a lot of analysts, experts on the street say that Siemens is on the growth to profitability, on the path to profitability. But the last time we spoke, you said you're cautiously optimistic. Will, you know, the competitive intensity, the kind of global macro headwinds, will that make you to continue to remain cautiously optimistic? Yes. So I'm always cautiously optimistic. 
um, but I, I would like to say that I have seen a continued demand since yes. we last spoke. Um, I'm positive about that, very positive of, at the demand side. I think we're moving in the right direction as a country. Um, I am cautious about the supply side okay. and the challenges that come out of the global queues there. Fair enough. And uh, finally, I wanted to also understand from you, Mr. Kotter, what the outlook is because there's there's been so much on automation that you that the company has integrated, smart mobility. What is the next game plan? How have you looked at a lot of initiatives as well that have been taken by the Indian government on uh, you know boosting digitalization? Yeah, I mean, as we spoke about earlier today, there's the of course by Prime Minister Modi the whole idea about having this one trillion of valuation of the tax sector. We of course want to contribute. To yeah, we even EV charging stations. And EV things charging now. is yeah. is all over there. But but Sunil said it really really well. We believe that the next phase of the Indian economy. Uh, and society is, is about being smart. Smart in manufacturing, smart in, manu uh, in the infrastructure. And the nice thing about Siemens is we can provide both. We can provide you the machinery and we can provide you the software in order to support. All right, we wish you all the very best and thank you so much, gentlemen, for taking time out. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you.